Hello and welcome back to the Padawan Podcast, our all our all Star Wars podcast <laughs> from Apocalypse Movies. Um, I am Jake Berlin, aka Qui Gon Jake. I am joined today by my fellow Rebel Scum, C three GO, and Grand Moff Barley. How's it going, guys? Good, doing good, doing I good. I think you're too excited for the Force Awakens, yeah, man. Yeah, I could, could not talk a little bit. Cannot talk. Stop yeah. thinking about it. It'll um, we'll be here soon. So we are doing our final podcast today for our Road to the Force Awakens. Our final Padawan podcast before we see The Force Awakens, which is very exciting. Our whole lives are going to change after, <laughs> after this week. Yeah, so uh, today we're going over The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, the two movies that are leading up to The Force Awakens. Um, if you don't know how this works, we're going to basically go over the first time we watched it, our first impressions and how it's t- changed over time, um, and then go into some positive and ne- positives and negatives and our overall thought on the film. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. We're going to start with uh, Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Um, Gio, I'm going to start with you, man. So do you remember the first time you watched The Empire Strikes Back? If so, what was your first thought? And how has it changed over time uh, since it's your first time watching it? Oh, I remember uh, just briefly. Um, I was with my siblings, and we were in our Power Rangers tent uh, camping in the room in the house when it was a cool thing back in the day. And... Uh, well, I don't remember too much as a child. Um, I remember how awesome the uh, Imperial Walkers, what are they called? The AT? And Hoth, the AT-ATs. The AT-AT yeah. Walkers, seeing those on screen for the first time, you're just like, whoa. And then you see Luke Skywalker, uh, you know, go up with his lightsaber and, you know, take one out by himself. That was pretty awesome. Other than that, um, the lightsaber battle, obviously. Um, but I don't remember too much as a child, honestly. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, this was before the prequels. Yeah. So I was a yes. very, very young yeah. child. And it was cool to look at, you know. So So what do you think about it now? Oh, phenomenal. Huh? Amazing. Like, you know, uh, as, as I grew older, these uh, um, the more and more Star Wars fans started... Uh, you know, saying how great the Empire Strikes Back is, especially looking back after we we've had the prequels, so like people appreciate the original films more, and they specifically talk about the Empire Strikes Back and what that did for the original trilogy, the turn it took, the darkness, and it all stands up even today. Like, sure, some of the uh, visual effects may not you know stand up today because we're so used to CGI and you know all this uh, weird tricky camera motions that they do. But during the time, like 84, was it 81? Uh, 77, I think it was 79. 79? No, it might have been 80, 81. You might be right. Because the 80, first one is 80, 70. Yeah, there you go. 80. 80. During that time, seeing things like the Hoth battle, um, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, God, what's that? The, the Cloud s- City. Cloud City. Thank you. Phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah. You know, and... Even though I saw the special editions, I did like how George Lucas was able to touch up some of those effects, especially Cloud City, just to make it, you know, stand the test of time more and people of the new generation can appreciate it and see how amazing it was back then. So for me, it definitely stands up. It's definitely dark. The reveal, every time it happens, you're just like, oh, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, it happens. Like, you know, Luke uh, yeah. finds out Vader is his father and all that. And uh, the Han Solo and Leia relationship. Well, we'll go into positives. Those are all your positives. Okay, yeah. So, yeah sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll get into yeah. positives. I'm no getting ahead that. of myself, my bad. So, uh, yeah. Jacob, uh, same with you. I mean, do you remember the first time you watched it? If so, what do you think? What do you think about it now? I mean, I don't remember the very first time I watched it. But Long time I remember ago. watching it as a kid. Um, it's weird because it's as like as a whole movie it's the one I remember the least but there's certain things that always stuck with me and st- stood out like that I could always remember and obviously the opening battle on Hoth I mean just the whole Hoth scene it's like I could always remember watching it as a kid and just how awesome is it that Luke takes one out just you know with, single-handedly yeah like without a vehicle without anything he just he takes it out just with his lightsaber and a little bomb or whatever he has in his hand. Um, that scene always stood out to me. And then, of course, the iconic, no, I am your father. Um, you know, the line that everyone always gets wrong, that they say, Luke, I am your yeah. father. I, I read an article about that a couple days ago. Um, but yeah, that always stood out to me. But um, other than those two moments, like it's the movie I remembered least, which is weird because now it's 
arguably my favorite Star Wars movie. I go back and forth between that and A New Hope. But, um, yeah, I, you know, uh, Hoth is like, Whenever I think about the original trilogy, Hoth is one of like the top three things that I always think of. So it's one of the most most memorable moments. Yeah, as far as my childhood, that's what stuck with me. And of course, I loved all these movies as a kid. So of this one. So it's the same now. I mean, it's... well, I, I appreciate it more now. It's it's because like I guess as a kid, I understand like the underlying themes and the dialogue and all that stuff going on, and I just. Yeah, I don't want to get into my positives yet. I mean, we're going to go yeah, in depth on that. Yeah. But um, watching it now, it's – it's I enjoy it. I, I enjoyed it as a kid. I enjoy it now. But right now, I just see how brilliant of a film it is. It's, it's a perfect sequel, and it's a perfect movie leaning, leading into a third movie in a trilogy. So – and even though the first Star Wars movie didn't even need a sequel. Like story wise, no, but no, 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 no. the way they pick it up mm -hmm. afterwards, and like the transition from movie to movie, like going into Empire and leaving Empire, going into Reven or Return, it it was done beautifully, and that's what I'm able to recognize now that I wasn't able to recognize as a kid. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I mean, you can hear it nowadays. It's like this is going to be the Empire Strikes Back. Of yeah, this everyone always pulls. That's that, the phrase. Know? So I mean, obviously. That's the kind of impact it had now, and it still has the impact to it today. Um, the entire Star Wars trilogy has an impact, but what Empire did is what kind of revolutionized what film is today. Like, I th think that's the movie everyone goes to for whenever they say, oh, it's Star Wars. That's why Star Wars is so good. And especially when you're talking about darker tone. Like, yeah, it, a compared to A New Hope, and exactly. it, it's very dark. And I, they took a very different approach, and it paid off huge. Yeah. And, I mean, there's all kinds of like, iconic moments. Um, the way it left everybody... Uh, when it ended, I mean, it's definitely a different film and it paid off big time. Um, yeah, I don't remember it when I watched it the first time either, but I remember watching it as a kid on the VHS tapes over and over and over again. I'm surprised they're not worn out, but um, it's something that I can watch over and over and again. It stands the test of time. It always will. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it really is. that That's the movie that really is Star Wars to me, just because it is my favorite. Um, so, but we're going to jump into our positives now and... Uh, Gio, I'm going to start with you. Um, what are some of the major positives that really stand out to you about The Empire Strikes Back? Um, well, I'm not going to go in any particular order, a chronological order as far as well, goes. Yeah, I'm no sure all over the place. But the first one I'll say is Harrison Ford as Han Solo. He really takes over this movie. Like I, When I was watching the movie, just like in the beginning, he really brings it. You know, he's everywhere. He's fast. He's energetic. You know, he's just, he really takes command of the screen, you know, and teasing Leia about, you know, loving him and when he's in the Millennium Falcon and, you know, everything until up until when he gets, you know, frozen. He's just, his character was just given so much more to do, you know, and it was really a step up and a, like a major positive for me. Um, I liked how they uh, kind of went, like the, they uh, explored more of Darth Vader. And um, he's not just this imposing, you know, villain. He turns out to be the father of, you know, this uh, kid that we all met in the last film. And um, so I like that, you know, his character was given more. And it was really this film that made him, for me, that made him the iconic villain, you know, because of just how how powerful he was and how much he tormented Luke and. Uh, his friends especially you know that like I said the the freezing scene for um, Harrison yeah. Ford it was amazing um, I like the darkness the grittiness of this one um, it really doesn't hold back as far as you know putting our heroes in danger they're constantly on the run well it's like I mean what happens with Luke and Darth Vader mm -hmm. and then you happen with Han Solo even C-3PO he gets Destroyed. destroyed yeah. yeah so it's like they leave our they leave all our favorite characters in pieces and then the betrayal you know like uh between uh lando and Han yeah, Solo, that, yeah you know like lando thinks you know okay they're just gonna take him away but when he when uh solo's being frozen he's looking at it and he's like this is a little bit like way yeah. too far you know like what are you doing darth vader uh so i really enjoyed that um and then, shot off the top, like how the film ends. Like, it's one of the best. I was telling Jacob, it's one of the best cliffhangers ever, you know. 
they're Probably on the sh- the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're on the ship. They're they're beaten up. They have like little hope left in them. But uh, Lando and Chewie, you know, they fly off in the Millennium Falcon, and it's, it's like it's that iconic shot, you know, where it just goes off of and, the galaxy. So Luke, Leia, R two D two, and C three PO looking out into space. And yeah, it's, like, it's what the hell are they going to do now? Yeah, you know? and for the time, like, can you imagine, like? back then like having to wait three years to see what happens next you don't have the internet you know the only updates you get are in newspapers and that happens every so often like it, it must have been crazy you know i would have loved to live back then and like yeah. experience that wait and, and not know the anything anticipation. like nowadays if that happened we would have probably gotten story details about how they're gonna rescue well, and, solo and if you, know? you think about it you don't see trailers like you do nowadays that's true too, it's only yeah. in a newspaper it's like the empire strikes back comes out this day yeah mm-hmm. they, they write like an article about you, like, have, you only see theaters in the movie theater yeah. or on tv yeah yeah it was it's pretty insane um i mean that i can i could probably go into more but i mean that, that's, a, that's all i really have for now all right, Jacob. So, any anything that really stands out to you the most, the most positives you got? Um, I gotta start with Han and Leia. I mean, when they first meet in A New Hope, like their their relationship begins right there, and it's like it's not, you know, the smoothest relationship, but it picks up right where they left off in the last movie. Like they, they're obviously attracted to each other. You can feel the sexual tension, but. You know, they're always, like, they never, neither of them want to admit it. And it's the Harrison Ford dialogue, just like, come on. He's like, you, you know, you know you have feelings for me. And then she's like, I I don't know exactly. She says, I'd rather kiss a Wookiee. And he's like, I can arrange that. And it's like, (laughs) it's so funny. It's, and that's what people forget sometimes. It's like, look, a lot of people associate comedy and funniness with something cheesy. Like the prequels with Jar Jar Binks tried to be funny, but it was horrible. This is how you do humor in a movie, an action movie with a darker tone, and you know it, it raises the quality of the movie, the humor in it. And you know, I agree with Gio completely. Harrison Ford steals this whole movie, just like the things he's saying to Chewbacca, and then Chewbacca has a response, and we don't know what he says. Well, this is where Han Solo became Han Solo. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, he was Han Solo in the first movie, but we we don't meet him for like the first hour. This is like really know. where the iconic. Yeah. Exactly. Han Solo became and he's, him, yeah. he's just so charismatic and I don't know if it's all Harrison Ford or if the directors had a part in like bringing that out of him I mean the dialogue has to do with it the way the character's written but you know kudos to him for just bringing this character to life like it you know arguably the most like be- one of the most beloved characters in any franchise of all time so um, that I gotta start with that um, just the you know, for the time it came out in 1980, the the visual effects still, if you if you go go know going into it when they came out, it's like mind boggling. Like it looks really good, especially you know the battle on Hoth first of all, and then just the the scenes where you just see spaceships flying in, yeah. in space, you know, and even just the battles, it all looks incredible. And you know, especially when you consider like when people say things hold up, I don't think they mean like. If it came out today, it would be suitable. They mean that, like, it's... Does it still look realistic today? Yeah, exactly. And especially when you say hold up, you got to consider what time that movie came out at. And it definitely holds up when you consider all that. So I, I love that. Um, they introduced two of the most iconic characters in this one movie. See, a lot of people don't remember that. We don't meet... I mean... In its special editions, we meet Boba Fett, and yeah. but well, Boba we Fett don't really was not meet introduced him. until Empire Strikes Back, and neither was Yoda. Like even as a kid growing up, you know, I didn't really know how to differentiate the movies. I just like so I always thought like Yoda was in the first movie, but as I got older, I realized he wasn't. So, you know, Yoda is probably like the top five most iconic Star Wars characters, and he was introduced in the second film. I love that, and then Boba Fett is introduced in the second film, and I love that. That what you mentioned, Gio, how Boba Fett's like, wait, Vader, like, I need him alive. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, and it's yeah. not that he cares about Han Solo at all, but he just he wants his money. He's about bounty hunter. Yeah. So like, it's it's kind of like, you know, Vader. You can't trust Vader. Like, he's gonna he'll double cross anybody. Yep. And he's like, it, and he's like, if do you have a problem with it, we can you know we can rearrange our, our <laughs> renegotiate our deal. Oh. What am I talking about? They introduced three of the most iconic characters. Lando, Lando Calrissian, Lando. dude. Oh, he's so, 
Billy Dee Williams freaking kills that. He's an incredible character, especially, you know, you first meet him and he's like, oh, who's this charismatic guy? And then he turns on them, but then he redeems himself by the end of the movie. And he's yeah. so like, he's like hitting on Leia and it's just, there's so many. He's exactly like Han. Yeah. It, it's, there's so many like, you know, character moments in this movie and, you know, character relationships. And it's like, it's all done so well. I think this movie has the best dialogue than any of the Star Wars movies. So, I mean, I, I can go on and on and on, but those are like my highlights of my positive. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo both of you. The Hunter Land stuff for sure. Um, obviously, Harry support as Han Solo. Stealing the movie. Um, this is, like I said, this is where he really became Han Solo, where the character of Han Solo became so iconic. Um, but a positive for me is like how how much different they decided to go with this one compared to the original, because it is so dark, it is so gritty. It's it's such a different story, even though it is within the same story. Um, you know, going from Hoth to uh, you know space, then to Cloud City. What is the the Dagobah De system? De where Luke went, to, Luke went to Dagobah. That was awesome. Yeah. The other stuff when he first yeah. met Yoda. Yeah. He finds out the path that he's going to take and like what's going to happen with the cave. And he ends up finding out, you know, like if you don't follow this path, you can end up being just like Darth Vader because he finds his head in that helmet. So much symbolism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff was really cool. Um, and at the same time, we also see that Luke is, he's not as um, pure of, I guess, pure of heart as we thought he was because... Yoda's telling him, oh, you have to do this if you, you know, you don't want to go anger. You have to follow this path. And he goes and finds his friends. It's like he kind of does his own thing. Right. And, you know, that he is a flawed character. And that's what kind of made it so great. Um, but, I mean, everything you guys mentioned, like Bubble Fett, Yoda, Lando, Cloud City, uh, the lightsaber battle, like you had mentioned, between Darth Vader and Luke at the very end. Mm -hmm. The toying that Darth Vader did with him. Like really showing that Luke has a very very long way to go. Um, oh yeah, when he like starts he, to use the Force, yeah, and he's Luke throwing can all only... these, like these objects at him, and Luke's trying to like hold himself off and all that kind of stuff. And obviously the the iconic moment of when he's hanging off the side and they're talking about his father. He's like, "No, you killed my father. No, I'm your father." It's like that moment still hits you every time you watch it. Um, it's so iconic. I mean, it's it made. I mean. That moment changed everything because what we can say about the prequels is what we say at the prequels, but that moment made the prequels. So we wouldn't have Star Wars without that kind of moment um, because it created the whole universe. Um, I also like the Carbonite scene too. Uh, the moment where she's like, I love you. And he's like, oh, oh yeah. Yes. How did I not mention you can't, that? You can't, you can't, you can't go without mentioning the dialogue. The, so yeah, yeah. the I love you and he goes, I know moment is so big. Arguably the single greatest moment it's in so all big. Star Wars, honestly. I mean, it's, it's like relationships have been trying to live up to that kind of relationship for yeah, years. Never. So um, there are so many, I mean, there's so many pauses. You can go on and on and on for this. Uh, I didn't mention the Battle of Hoth, but that kind of goes without saying. Yeah, of course. The way the movie started it off, I mean, you can't start off a movie any better. It's so good. Um, and just the adventure they kind of go on from there. It's it's incredible. And the way, it, like you guys said, the ending, so good. Even though it's so dark and horrifying, like where it leaves us off, like with Han and Carbonite, Luke without a hand, uh, Calrissian now in charge of the, of the Falcon with Chewie, uh, all these, these players in pieces. But... It's like now you're so intrigued with like what comes next. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Um, so those are all our positives. We're going to move into our negatives yet. Uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of less negatives from Jacob and I at least. I don't know about Gio. Uh, so we're going to start off with Gio because I'm really interested to see what he has to say about this. So pessimist. Um, so Gio, I mean, what do you got, man? What are your, what are your big my. negatives? Han and Leia. <laughs> really? I mean... Okay, I, I love their relationship. I buy it. I don't have any problems with their relationship. But if we're nitpicking here... Where did that come from? The opening, all right, so in my mind, I'm, I'm speaking from my mind. At the end of A New Hope, it seems like Luke and Leia have a thing, which is, I think what they originally intended for because they never intended on making Empire and Return of the Jedi, I don't think. Wait, say that again? All right, so at the end of A New Hope, it, it seems like Leia and Luke have this sort of connection I think she was doing that just to make him stop. What do you mean? Make Han stop. Like she, she was toying with Han. Like she she kissed Luke 
just to yeah, just, oh no 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 I'm talking about a new hope yeah don't they doesn't she kiss him at the end of a new hope yeah who kiss who Luke Luke she kisses Luke at the end of a new hope does she yeah really yeah and she I think she I'm did that with him just to toy is it with on the lips or the cheek no it's on the lips well she kisses him in Empire when uh. Oh, it might be Empire. That's then. what you're thinking of. It's okay, Empire it is, when, yes, right, when right. they rescue yes. Luke from when Luke's, Luke's done defrosting. Right. So she kisses it, but it is it's to make Han jealous. That's the only reason. No, no, yeah. Not necessarily jealous, but to piss Han off. So because Han keeps like hitting on her, like you know, implying that they have a romantic relationship. So she's like, "Haha, look at this!" And you could see it in her face. She doesn't really have feelings for Luke. Like she cares about Luke, but she doesn't have romantic feelings towards him. You talking about Empire? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about going into Empire. For me, it, it was it seemed like Luke and Leia were meant to have because rewatching A New Hope, it's like I don't know. It it seemed like Luke their and relationship Luke was and more Leia than Han and Leia. It was yeah, more okay. than Han and Leia. And then you go into uh, Empire Strikes Back, and you see and you start noticing like Leia's paying close attention to Han Solo every move that he makes. Once he enters the room, she's like. Looking over her shoulder at him, you're like, is he gonna leave? Is he gonna stay? And it turned out to be an excellent relationship, the best in the in the series. But going into it, you're like, whoa, like, where did this come from? You know, like, there was no setup to this. All right, in a can I mode. offer? Go ahead, uh, yeah, yeah, go you ahead. Know, go an ahead. argument. <laughs> All right, there's, I don't know exactly how much time is in between A New that's, Hope that's and Empire, but. In any sequel, in any movie, you can't just say, oh, they established this in the first movie, so it doesn't make sense in the second movie, because there's a time period that we did not see. Dur dur during the events in between the two movies, we don't know what Leia, Han, and Luke have been doing or how their relationships have developed. So the genius thing about this movie is we don't need to know. When the movie starts, they're at certain places in their relationships, and it's up to you as a viewer to figure it out and... So I don't look at that as a negative at all. And I think even in A New Hope, as soon as Luke and, or Han and Leia meet, there's sexual tension. And yeah, Luke is, in, is like, you know, crushing on the princess, but he doesn't know that's his sister. He has no idea. Like he's, you know, he just thinks she's beautiful or whatever. So I never saw, I, I never saw Leia having romantic feelings towards Luke pretty much ever. I just thought that she cared about him, and but Luke had a crush on her until he finds out that it's his sister. Right. Well. All right. Well, well that's that's actually all the negatives I have. So the Luke and, or Han and Leia stuff. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. But awesome. did that make sense? What I said about it, it, there's time period in between that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Did I change your mind a little bit? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. You yeah, still you still don't buy it though. Well. It's, I mean, I, I, no, I, I don't really buy it, but yeah. no, going into it, I, I just, it's just like, well, wait, where did this come from? You know, it's one of those things. And I always take it back to what made Avengers such a great film was because you went into it knew, knew, knowing where everyone was, you know, Cap was getting, well, I'm talking about something else, but I mean, that's. No, we understand. Yeah. We understand what you're saying. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. This is the Star Wars, like, I'm, I'm working on my written review right now, right? And it is the hardest film for me to come up with negatives for, honestly. Like, I, even though I might like A New Hope more, I was able, you know, I had negatives ready, you know, for A New Hope because there are negatives. But, and there's negatives in this film, don't get me wrong, but it's just, it's, my negatives are very nitpicky. Like, it's so hard for me to come up with negatives. But I will say, I, um... While I love Yoda overall, I felt like his introduction was a little too comedic and a little Jar Jar-ish, I think. Like, even though it was an act, he was just kind of messing with Luke. Like, not he didn't want Luke to know right away who, that he was Yoda. So he's kind of, you know, he was doing that on purpose. And then when you look at the evolution of the character, it all makes sense. But just like, imagine if you didn't know who Yoda was and you first meet him, you're like, who the hell is this little alien guy trying to be funny you know it's it's just i'm looking at it at the context of like if i didn't know who yoda was and i was watching this movie for the first time so uh just that's something that i nitpicked but like so you so you think his introduction was too comedic without the prequels like if you never watched the prequels yeah okay i'm just wondering and i never seen yoda before and that I'm, was my first okay. time ever seeing yoda okay. 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because so, like, I, I could see the I could see the seeing Yoda and how he's in the prequels and then going to the Empire Strikes Back, like, okay, it's a totally different character. Yeah. But, so that's why I was wondering. No, yeah, I'm just saying, like, even if I haven't seen the prequels, you know? Okay. But, um, but then later on in the movie, we find out who Yoda really is, and then you see his personality from the prequels. Mm-hmm. He's very serious, elegant, you know, see, Jedi I kinda, master. I kind of looked at it as just like, this dude's been in isolation for like So he's kind of kooky. Decades, like, yeah. yeah. No, Even though he is a Jedi master, like yeah. the And he's Jedi old, master. like he's on his deathbed pretty much. Yeah, you know? so I just feel like the isolation's kind of uh, screwed with him a little bit because he's been yeah. there for Luke's, what, 20 years old? Plus That's what I'm saying. Like, so when many you look years, at the, it's like 30 years. look at the evolution of his character, it makes sense. Yeah. And what he's been through and where he's at, but... Just in that moment when they first introduced him, it's like, it was, yeah, okay, yeah, like, really, you know, it's yeah. a kind of little too jokey yeah. kitty, you know? Um, man, I had another negative, but it's like, it's probably <laughs> not that important, so I, like, forgot about it. But um, come back to me. I might have another negative. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I understand what you're both saying. I mean, I'm cool with both of them, honestly. Uh, but I would say for my negative, and it's straight nitpicky, and it, it's almost like, why would it be a negative? But... How uh, Lando is kind of forgive so quickly. That's like, even though it it, it justifies it, you know, he saves Leia and Chewie and all this kind of off, sat, off the cloud city. And they're like, all right, we trust you. Take the Millennium but Falcon. Han, and, but Han yeah. ended up in freaking Carbonite for what he did. Oh, we're gonna talk about that in Return so of like, the Jedi. I it's it. I understand why he was he was forgiven and like he saved them, all this kind of yeah. stuff, but. It seems so quick. They shouldn't have forgiven was, him so easily. It was such a quick turnaround, yeah. but that's that's like no, that's, the nitpicky of nitpicky, right there. I, I know what you're saying. I agree with you. It's a little like that was quick, you know. Yeah. But um, at the same time, like they don't really have time to little exactly. Like, that's sit and back I and understand why they did against it. each other. I understand and why they did. He even yeah. says he's like even when they first open that door and Vader's like he's like sorry, Han, I didn't have a choice. Yes. Like, it, he didn't want to do that, and even when like. The whole time Vader has them under captive, he keeps asking, like, are, like they're going to be okay, right? Leia and Chewbacca can stay here. You know, you take Han. You yeah. Know. He, he's protecting Cloud City, too, you know? Yes. And he has a whole, like, city to look after. So, um, like, his initial turn, I actually have a problem with more with maybe his initial turn than them forgiving him. But at the same, both are nitpicking. You mean turning on him, turning on Han yeah, in general? But, but then, yeah, but then it makes sense because... You know, he's not going to risk his whole city and himself for one guy. Yeah. You know, but then, you know, he redeems himself at, you know, by the end of the movie. So it makes sense. But I agree with you as far as it was very quickly forgiven. That's, I mean, that's probably like, as of now, the only negative that I can come up with. And that's like really nitpicking. Yeah. I mean, also, here's a negative I just thought of. It's like, I know it came out in 1980 and they don't have the best special effects and everything, but like, when he fights that snowman or whatever, it just like the cuts. Oh, the abominable snow. The it, cuts yeah. with the fight just looks so cheesy to me, and it's like I feel like even back then they could have done a better job at that. Yeah, we cut the limb off. The limb yeah, and it's just like yeah, it looked it just looked bad even for 1980. But honestly, other than that, this movie I can't it's, think of it's any flawless. More. Like my even opinion. Geo only had one negative. Like <laughs> I was expecting like an eight eight list negatives, you know. Oh, this won't be the last time I talk about it, so I'm sure. Find yeah. something later. Well, we got anything else negative wise? Anything no. we can think, talk about? Not that I can Ooh. think of. Right. I had a, another negative, but I can't even remember it. So it just goes to show how unimportant it is. You look, you look like you want to talk about something. No, I just I, I know it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Come on. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up our Empire Strikes Back. So, um, we're gonna jump into you know what this film really means to us now, and you know the impact it's had on us as uh, film fans and film critics. That what? So, Jacob, I'm gonna shoot back to you. Like, what does this film? really mean to you and like did it inspire you to kind of do what we do now i mean just star wars in general has done that yeah. but i think we can all say that like like back when i was a kid i wasn't able to recognize like oh this film's better than this film this film's better than this film but um looking back now and watching this like honestly in the past year i've watched this movie like six times i mean it doesn't sound like a lot but that's kind of a lot that's you a know? lot well six, for a movie that's 40 years old, that's a like lot. Like six times in a year, yeah. that's crazy. And I'm going to actually go watch it again today. I'm going to watch it as again. I write, <laughs> I'm going to watch I, it next week. Because yeah. I'm, I'm finishing up my review, and like I can't really think of negatives, so I'm going to watch it again today and look for some negatives. And I'm going to put that in a review like it's all nitpicky. But honestly, I, I haven't seen every movie ever made. And you know, keep this in mind, I've never seen The Godfather or The Godfather Part Two, but 
this is the best sequel I've ever seen. I, I, I echo that completely. It's, the, it's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. And, you know, I... And when you're talking about best sequel ever made, you don't... I'm not just talking about the movie by itself. I'm ta- I talked about this earlier, but the way it A New Hope transitions into this movie and the way this movie ends and it transitions into Return, it's done so well. And when you're talking about a trilogy... I think uh, the, the second movie in the trilogy is arguably the most important because you have to bridge the gap between the two films and it does that beautifully and that's why I think it's the greatest sequel ever made that I've seen. So it, that's how I view this film now. What do you think, Gio? Yeah, this film really makes me proud of what I do, what I'm doing right now, I'm talking about movies. Um, so it does that and as far as like it, it probably is the greatest sequel ever made i haven't seen godfather 2 uh, which i hear tremendous and phenomenal things about but as far as this film i think this film really set the the uh the standards for dark films for gritty films you know um when like you said earlier you know people always talk about you know, could this be the Empire Strikes Back of this franchise, you know, because of what this film did. I mean, you thought the Empire was dead, and you go into this film uh, seeing the Rebels on the run. Like, no, this battle is far from over. Darth Vader did not die. Yeah. And there's even, there's going to be even more trouble for our heroes, which clearly, you know, as it all plays out, it's really dark and um it's exactly why it's called the empire strikes back yeah (laughs) even more fitting and echo what jacob says you know you how it uh you go in and it exits into the new film it's just it's so perfect it's it's amazing uh so i mean that's how i feel about it it's people recognize it as one of the one of the best films ever and that's that's something i will not argue it deserves that title i just one more positive i always wondered does Darth Vader ever clean himself? And I never noticed this before, but when he goes in that little bubble thing he and it shows off. his helmet, yeah. I'd be, I'm assuming that that machine like takes all his robotic parts off and like rinses him down and then cleans his robot parts and then puts them all back on, which is like, think about it. George Lucas or whoever's writing the script. Uh, Lawrence they, Kasdan. Yeah, duh. Well, there's a couple writers on here. There was a female writer too, Leia something. But anyways... Like I'm saying, I don't know who came up with that to show that, but that's very att- pays attention to detail. Like they thought of that. Like we need to show how Vader. You know, he's not just this. You know, robot. You know, yeah. he's he's part human too. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo everything you guys said. I mean, there's nothing. I already said it's my favorite movie of all time. So I guess that kind of wraps everything up for me. Um, so we're gonna move on to Return of the Jedi now. We're gonna jump into the final movie leading up to the Force Awakens. Um, the last time we saw our heroes that we're seeing uh, next week, um, the final film in the original trilogy. Um, so Jacob, I'm gonna go right back to you. Um, what would what was this movie like when you were a kid? Um, what do, what does it mean to you now? Like, what is your has your perception changed over time as you watch it more and more? Well, I, earlier I said that Empire is the movie I could recall least, like as far as the whole movie. But of course, certain moments stand out. Um, and a, a New Hope was the one I remembered the most, but this one's somewhere in the middle. Like I, whenever I ever, whenever I always thought of this movie, like prior to we're watching it a lot lately, um, I always the scene that always stuck with me was when he takes off Vader's helmet, and they they talk the him for a yes. little bit, and he, uh, I forget what he says. He says something about Leia, like uh, tell your sister you were right. He yes. said there was good in me. He doesn't say that, but that's what he's talking about. That there was good in him, and. Um, as far as like meaning meaningfulness and like uh, you know having like the most uh, iconic moment I guess and like just seeing Vader throw the Emperor off and what that moment mean and like if I mean I, this is gonna be in my positives but I, this like echoes what I feel about the whole film um, like I always and you, if you watch it again the camera as you know the Emperor's electrocuting Luke the camera keeps panning back to Vader's yes. face and it's like like does it like five times and it shows you that he's struggling with that and um and i i noticed that as a kid too and so i um yeah i this movie uh, i i really loved it as a kid you know um it's 
it's really it, it it ends the story in a very beautiful way and that's something that always stuck with me as a kid but um and as far as now watching it um man this is tough so I don't know if I want to qualify some of the things George Lucas added to the special editions as me actually talking about the real film because if I'm talking about the special edition version which is kind of the only one I can I can talk about really um, there's some laughable things in this movie and I'm gonna talk like I'm gonna differentiate I'm gonna before I talk about my negatives I'm gonna say what it is that it's from the you know special editions but um, watching it now it's I love the movie still don't get me wrong I absolutely love it but it's my least favorite of the original trilogy and I might even like one or two of the prequels more than this movie, especially the special editions. But um, still, I, I I love watching it and I enjoy mostly every minute of it. So yeah, I, it's I mean it, may, it like you said I think it's my least favorite of the original trilogy as well, and that's for some things. But the movie it's still a Star Wars movie. It's I mean it finished out a story that um, is probably one of the greatest stories of all time. And like you said the the evolution that Luke and Darth Vader took together, this kind of path they took together and finished it together. Um, very strong, very powerful. Um, seeing all everything wrap up, you know, Han coming back, they're going, they're going to rescue him in the beginning. Um, the story with Lando, you know, coming into the group. Um, just everything that happened and how it all finished, it was, it was really good to see and it finished off on a strong suit. Um, I love that each of the three films in the original trilogy were directed by someone else. So I love that too. It was a really uh, different take from everybody else, but it continued the same story in a very uh, good way. Um, it's not, it, like, I don't love it as much as Empire Strikes Back, but it had just as much of an impact on me as Empire Strikes Back as a kid. Um, and it still does today. I still very much enjoy watching it. I love watching it every time I put it on. Um, it's still Star Wars. We get to see Luke as a full Jedi in this one. He's like, mm -hmm. he's a full Jedi. He's got the robes on. He's got the green lightsaber. You know, he's he's fighting bad guys, um, which is what we and is what we know of him as. And I mean, it holds a special place because it's the last time we saw these characters. And definitely, and it's the first time we'll see him again next week. But um, we saw them end on a really good note all together. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to see what The Force Awakens does. Obviously, it's going to change everything. So, um, do you, I mean, what about you? Do you, uh, what was it like when you were a kid, and what do you think about it now? I, this is the film that I most responded to as a kid. For some reason, I loved seeing our heroes in the forest. Um, indoor. Indoor, yeah. That, that uh, speed, uh, what are those things the called? The speeder bikes. Speeder bikes. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool scene. As a kid, it's it cool was scene. so awesome to look at, you know, like how fast they were moving. I've always loved uh, Luke Skywalker more with the green lightsaber. I mean, well, that's what he's known for. I mean, this is me as a kid. You yeah. know, I was like, hey, he has a blue. I was like, eh, Obi Wan had a blue. You know, like could show something else. Than yeah, because it was green. different. It was yeah. the first time we ever saw a different color lightsaber yeah, other yeah. than the red or blue. Mm -hmm. And he was a fully fledged Jedi too. Seeing him, you know, like use the Force on the pigs. What were they? Those. Oh uh, yeah, for uh, on Jabba's palace. Yeah, the pig guards, yeah. whatever they yeah. were. Um, so, I mean, that was pretty cool. It was just, I mean, for some reason, like, I'm thinking about back as a kid, like, it was a film I was the most attached to. It had nothing to do with the Ewoks. In fact, I don't even remember the Ewoks as a kid. <laughs> uh, but looking at it today, um, it didn't close out the Star Wars tr trilogy in the best way, but it did so in a good enough way to where we're all just like, wow, like, what an amazing story it was. So when you say that, um, that didn't close out in the best way, right? do you think that's because George Lucas always had in mind of continuing the story? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, there's there's proven uh, like quotes and in interviews that said, um, even from Mark Hamill, that he had episodes 7, 8, and 9 mm -hmm. already planned. So does that maybe change your mind at all, or is it just like... Um, not as much, only because I've, I've we've seen what he did with the New Hope and how oh, he, okay. he made that gotcha. like yeah. the ending. I, I, I and I even gotcha. Empire Strikes Back, it's like, what happened here? Yeah. You know, like, and um, only because the 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 expectations were so high too. Yeah, it was the from, final one. Yeah, from Empire to Return of the we Jedi. We talk about all the time movies that 
follow the greatest movie ever have a hard time succeeding. It's it's, it's the curse of the third film in trilogies. You know, Spider Man three, uh, The Dark Knight Rises, Blade three, uh, X Men: The Last Stand, Mockingjay Part on, one. I can go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, so I, I think it had a, a tough task and it didn't live up to it. But that's not to say it's not a good Star Wars film. Especially when you look at the trilo- uh, the prequels, and you know it's like, yeah, this film definitely. Uh, it still has its its fantastic moments. It's yeah. great moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what I gotta say. Well, let's jump into our positives now. So, uh, Gio, I'm gonna go right back to you. Um, what are some of the major, the bigger positives that really stand out to you about Return of the Jedi? Yeah, and again, I'm going back. I'm going everywhere, like uh, not just in yeah, no problem. Cool order. Um, I I really like the. Uh, there was a little bit of humor in the beginning between uh, Lando and Han Solo. Um, you know, like, you know, Han is blind, but mm-hmm. he's still like, wait, don't move. I'm going to shoot for the, the little the guy. Yeah. He's like, wait, I thought you were blind. Like, I, I was laughing during those moments. Yeah, that's a good moment. Like, like nice comedic moments. Um, or he's like, Boba Fett. Where is Boba Fett? And he swings Where's Boba blind. Fett? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Boba Fett. Like he he doesn't he hardly doesn't do anything in Jabba's palace. But I was telling Jacob this, the way he just stands there and he's just medicine. like leans well, up, he, the way he lifts up his gun, he lifts up his gun. That he means business. I was like prior to this, I was he didn't talking, hesitate. He's yeah, like, and I remember I was telling you guys like uh, this was weeks ago. I was like, man, I, I don't really see what the big deal is about Boba Fett. I don't know if you guys remember me telling yeah, me like this. Why, you. Yeah, like why you don't understand why he's like, such I don't a understand character. why Boba Fett. And I look at Return of the Jedi, and it's like, it's it, he's great, but the potential was even for they could have so done much. so much more with his yeah. character. It was it was it's really unfortunate, but I mean, he, he was awesome. Um, I really liked the scenes with uh, with well, the scene with uh, Luke and Yoda, where Yoda kind when he of, goes back, where Yoda yeah. kind of explains everything again. It's dialogue. It's you know, um, there's so much there, and. I don't think he fully tells Luke that it's Leia, but Luke figures it out, right? Uh, like, there's he, a, one more. There's another Skywalker. He says there is another. He said when he says there's Sky another. Walker. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So. Um, yeah. So I and mean, and then he's like Leia. Says it right away. Does yeah. he say it? Luke does? Oh, Luke yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, that's right. You are right. No, that's yes. what I'm talking. Yes, I, he, my, you're right. It might have sounded like I was trying to like imitate Yoda. No, but, you're right. No, but yeah, he, does. he says there's another Skywalker, and then I think Yoda says your sister, and then no, he never says that. Okay, but but then, he says he says Leia. He does say Leia. Luke says Leia. Yeah, he guesses it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that's that's later when Alec Guinness shows up again as the Force Ghost, right? No, this right is when after. Leota dies. Yeah, and then right after he goes outside, and then he goes, "I can't do this by myself," yeah. and then. Alec Guinness appears, yeah, and then they go. That's when he really figures out. But uh, the standout scene for me um, is with the in the Emperor's throne room between Luke and Vader and, and, and the Emperor. Mm-hmm. Just it, for me, it's more exciting than anything else that's going on, whether it's the indoor battle or you know, the space battle. As, as much as we love, it's a trap, you know, it's like it's it's the Emperor trying to get underneath Luke's skin. And you know, trying to bring out, and he nearly does it. In fact, that that was one of my reasons why I said Luke kind of fails as a Jedi is because he broke. Like the, the Emperor might have died, and the Empire might have you know been mostly destroyed, but they succeeded in getting under Luke's skin and making him draw that lightsaber and strike the Emperor. You know, like I mean, I have a theory about that, but we can go about yeah, that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like. Uh, what Jacob mentioned is, you know, where you take off the mask, and it's like, it's that find the father son connection we've been waiting it's for. Like, and he's yeah. like, let me look at you with my own eyes. Mm-hmm. It's like that's there's so much heart the there chills, and chills emotion, and all that. And as much as we talk about the negatives, which I wholeheartedly agree with you on uh, for the uh, the special effects, I really love the end where it shows. The celebrations that are happening in the, the different worlds. It shows. We see. We see is, what, is that? In, do you think that was in the original? I don't think. No, 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 no I don't no, think no, so. No. Yeah, that was added. It shows correct? Coruscant. It shows Naboo. All from the prequel stuff. Uh, and then some other. That's kind of cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, we get to see different because yeah. we we didn't see them yeah. in all those movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, different planets. That was. Um, I, I, I I think the other one was Tatooine. If I'm not mistaken, it might have been Tatooine. Yeah, yeah. but it just it, it adds so more, mm-hmm. uh, so much more to, to the celebration and all that. And there's even a shot of them pulling down the the emperor's uh, 
statue, big statue on Coruscant. Like, it's very brief, uh, but it's, I thought that was cool. And, you know, I don't know about Hayden Christensen as, you know, the Force, Force Ghost, Ghost, but seeing all three of them. With but that, it connects it. That was like, a nice it, little tie. It connects tie. everything together, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. So those are my positives. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll echo everything you said. I mean, those are all great stuff. And um, there's a lot of good stuff that is in this movie. Like, obviously, the standout is the Emperor's Room, like you had said. Stuff that goes on between Vader, Luke, and uh, the Emperor. Um, I'll throw a theory out there that may have not been uh, an idea at the time, but maybe Luke is a gray Jedi who teeters between dark and light, who knows how to control it. Oh, I'm just yeah. saying. Oh, hmm. I'm just saying. Could well, be. I, maybe it wasn't thought of back then, but the gray Jedi have always been thought of who can control both dark and light and teeter well, back Well, if you guys forth. pay attention when you're watching it, not that you don't, but Luke like budges for a second when he swings on the Emperor, but as soon as he has Darth Vader on the floor and the Emperor's telling Darth he holds off. He throws his lightsaber yeah. on the floor and says, "No, I will not do it." So to me, that seems he's not tempted by the dark side a little tiny bit, but his he was able to overpower it more than he was like you know tinkering with going to the, the light dark side, side overpowered the dark side. Yes, yeah. and by I, a lot. And he I, and threw I, his lightsaber down and said no. And I, I agree. Not kill him. But my, my whole thing is the only, the only weight I'm holding to my argument is that if you break once, you can break again. All it no. takes is circumstances. It's very, it's very true. But very he true. did very much, uh, you know, not go to the dark side. But yeah. I mean, but also it's like, well, you know, we know Jedi's aren't supposed to have attachments, but Luke's weakness is his strength. His, very different time period. His too. um, his friend, his love for Han and Leia mm-hmm. and Chewbacca and R two D two and you know C three PO, like that. He cared about them more than anything. And that showed in Empire and Return. So, like, you know, it's that's what the Emperor used to get under his skin. Like, he was like, "Your friends are gonna die." Da da da. So, and it's not like the Jedi. I mean, what Jedi are gonna you know extinct them from the Order? Like, they're yeah, his exactly. last hope. It's, it's, they have it's, no choice. It's a, it's a new time. There he, was no Jedi Council. He like now that. establishes the new rules. Yeah, but which, I feel like him yeah. caring for them made him stronger. Actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, another positive for me is, you know, through two movies, we've seen snippets of the rebellion as we go, but, but now we got like we, a full like, battle full on. We see the rebellion in all its yeah. glory. Mm-hmm. Mon Mothma, you know, talking mm-hmm. about fucking spies, all this kind of stuff. Akbar. Um, Abram Akbar. He's it's awesome, dude. Like, it, even though he looks iconic, funny, who, but that's the iconic quote. It's a trap. It's like, yeah. it's so good. Um, I'm so glad he's coming back for the Force Awakens. Yeah, that's, that's, that's super awesome. cool. Oh, you guys know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, we do okay. know that. I, I was gonna say that that was in a TV spot that I saw that you guys didn't, and I was like, oh. well, I knew he, I knew they said he's coming back. Like, yeah, they said it a JJ while ago. JJ Abrams came out yeah, and said pretty that. Pretty sure they said it's that not a while spoiler. Ago. Yeah, yeah guys, but um, so. yeah, so I mean, that to see the rebellion of full fledged going in a, against a full fledged empire is really cool. Um, we kind of get to see. Uh, the full like full emperor too for the first time. Yeah, we've seen him talk. You're right. You know a little bit through the first two, but this this is where we really see him yeah. be the emperor mm-hmm. with his lightning and all that kind of stuff. Good. You know, and, um, <laughs> talking all weird with the hood and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. Obviously, the big moment is like we've talked about before, the father son moment where he takes off the helmet. Uh, so fantastic. Um, and you know how he takes his body back and he. He burns him. He's the one who burns him, and that's obviously going to have repercussions in the Force Awakens. But um, there's so many good things that come from this movie. The 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 Geo said the speeder bikes. That was really fun. Uh, there's fun moments. There's dark moments. There's action moments. It kind of has everything blended together. Um, the Han and Leia stuff on Endor is really cool. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit of that probably in the negatives. But um, any more positives that you guys thought of over time? Oh well, I didn't actually. Oh, do my positives. You didn't do your positives. Well, there you go. Okay. Any positives? Um, well, while it's this is my least favorite of the original trilogy, ha- it, it has the best scene in any Star Wars movie for me is that moment between Vader, the Emperor, and Luke. That whole sequence, even though it's like it's spread out over like 25, 30 minutes. Yes, it, cuts and it keeps cutting the battle back and, forth, and Endor. Yeah. Just the, all those scenes combined together the best because it it's a whole it's a culmination of everything going on in the whole story of star wars it's battle between the dark side and the light side and you know 
putting the decision on one person to make a choice, you know, depending on how strong they are mentally and emotionally. So that, you know, echoed the whole Star Wars for me. It's like it all came down to Vader and it's like the whole chosen one thing and it's like was was Vader really the chosen one because he killed the emperor? Vader killed the emperor. Like so um, he did bring balance to the force. Yeah. So was he the cho- was or was is Luke the chosen one? Uh, maybe we'll find out in next week. Who knows? But um, just that. I mean, I could talk about that whole moment for an hour, but that it's the greatest moment in any of the movies. It really me. picks up once Vader mentions his sister turning to the dark side, mm-hmm. and it's just oh, the, the gets, music, the toying, the toying yeah, he yeah, gets pissed. Oh. Um, yeah. So uh, well, that kind of like that shows like how dark Vader can go. Like he's talking about his own daughter turning the dark side like that. Yeah, but it could have been that he was pressured from the emperor too. Well, he always so, was pressured from the emperor. emperor. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, I, I, that's well we see, we see that, that in the comics well, now, though. Like that's the, the thing I would thing. love about Vader that he respects order and he was any and, and like he um, he's not even though he, you know he doesn't like just roam around recklessly and do whatever he wants. He 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 took orders from Tarkin when. He could squish talking like a bug if he wanted to. He took orders from the emperor, even though he could have tried to kill the emperor. He's he's still a Padawan, and he's who he's arguably more powerful than the emperor. Like who who's who knows? Which is a but, bit inconsistent. I'm sorry to keep, but you know because the Jedi Order, he had such a tough time taking you know from Mace Windu, even from Yoda. Like he didn't like what he heard, you know, what he heard. But in this one, he, I think. Probably just because he fully fledged himself for the dark side that he probably just took orders. Well, yeah, um, and I, I love that about Vader because it it, it just goes to sh- it's part of his humanity too that he respects order, mm-hmm. you know. So that's a positive for me. Um, this is like kind of just a personal thing, and it it makes me want to put uh, Return of the Jedi as my favorite movie is Slave Leia. I knew it. I <laughs> be careful here. No, go ahead. Um, like it's just the most iconic like sexual thing in geek yeah. culture like it's slave Leia. like she looks so good in that that outfit and you know that doesn't goes toward the quality of the film but it, it kind of it it's been such an iconic thing in pop culture that it it almost does so um and it's just funny if you watch it and you look at the look on her face it's like she kind of in, it looks like she enjoys it kind of it's weird like watch look at her face when you're when she's like laying down next to java like i probably won't be looking at her face yeah but <laughs> dude she is so hot i'm sorry i like I, this is now underground is. bunker and, guys <laughs> and it's like she back then she looked so damn good like it's crazy well and i'll move on i just you know i I love Princess Leia. What about today? <laughs> Come on, man. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things, you know. I, I actually love how Han's getting jealous of Luke and Leia. Because he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. And like, yeah. as after Luke tells Leia that they're brother and sister, Han walks up right away. And he's like, oh, what's wrong? And she's like, nothing. I just need to be alone. And he's like, oh, but you can tell Luke. And he's, you and tell he's Luke. like, you're, and at, even at the end, he's like, he's like, you're in love with him, aren't you? And she like smiles. She's like, it's not like that. He's like, he's my brother. And then Han starts laughing like that. It can. No, he doesn't even laugh. He has like this stun, and then she oh, kisses yeah. him. Uh huh. Yeah. And he has like this look on his face. He's like, what the? Heck? It just <laughs> mind yeah. blown. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, so, and he kind of looks relieved. He's like. Finally, see that. See, this is a moment that we've never got to see. We've never got to see or see the moment between Luke and Han where he knows that they're brother sister. We never, we've never oh, seen that. Right. And hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to see that during the Force Awakens. We've seen that for a little bit when they hug at the end, and they're like. But we never like saw yeah, them but, talk and be together. Yeah, gotcha, they were yeah, still yeah, celebrating yeah. what happened. Hasn't been explored. Yeah. yeah so like, I could see Han teasing him about how he used to have a crush on her, or you know? how they oh, kissed. Oh, yeah. Like, how they kiss? So like, how you kiss your? <laughs> how's I was kissing your sister, like, huh? I hope there's some, <laughs> like I know there are going to be different characters in the Force Awakens, but, but I hope I there's like love one to line. see that kind of moment where. Han, like they're they're brothers. They're now brothers because of Han and Leia. Well, even before that, dude, there's I, I forgot to mention in my in when we talked about Empire, but I love Luke and Han's relationship. Yes. Because they're so different. Yes. And but Han risks his life 
twice. on Hoth. Well, he comes back in yeah. New Hope. Yeah, in New Hope, but like, yep. um, you know. But he goes out in the snow Hoth and Hoth is like more of like yes. a suicide mission. Yes. Like, you know, he, he knew he could have been stranded out there and he risked his own life. And like, I love that he really cares about Luke, you know. It's, He's almost a father, father figure to Luke. A little, or older brother. Oh, I older say. brother is a good one. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. uncle something, like just, you know, older brother. Older, an older male, brother's a good, older model, brother's a good one, yeah. You know, and he kind of, he kept Luke in check a little bit just mentally, you know. So um, that's, I mean, that was an empire, but it continues in return. Yeah. So um, we don't see him very much together, but when they are, you can tell it's there. Going back to uh, Han's jealousy, it, because this whole time we first meet Han, he's this, you know, he's a strong, mentally, emotionally, strong character and he's very comedic and like he doesn't really show emotion and we finally see him break it shows that he's vulnerable and that's a good thing like you know n like everybody puts on an act like they're tougher than they are and like it's it's the one time we get we see han vulnerable so and it leia's the only one who makes him that way so it's really it's it's the best love story ever told in my opinion honestly so um yeah, there's a bunch of positives I could come up with, but and just seeing Luke as a full fledged Jedi Knight is freaking amazing. Like mm -hmm. when you see him walk into Jabba's palace, like you don't want to mess with, with the hood. You we don't, don't know who he is at first. You do not want to mess with Luke at this point. So it's just the evolution of his character in each film is incredible. All right, well, I think that's gonna wrap up our positives. We're gonna jump into our negatives. Um, I'll start with you, Jacob. Uh, what are some of the standout negatives? I'm sure I can know one. But what are some of the standout negatives that uh, you know, kind of almost took you away from the love of Return of the Jedi? All right, so this was added in the special edition, so I want to differentiate this. You know, there's a lot of people, and these are the only versions people have seen. So a lot of negatives do come from the special edition. And it's like, let's, let's get that out there. A lot of their negatives probably do come from the special yeah, edition. So, and I'll different, I don't know exactly what was special edition, what wasn't. And we never will. But I know, all right, so. In, in Jabba's palace, the freaking dancing and singing aliens is the most wretched thing I've ever seen in Star Wars. Worse than anything in the prequels. But it's also it's the same as George Lucas doing that. It's the George Lucas from the prequels putting that in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. The worst moment in any Star Wars movie ever is those. It, it's a crime. That dancing alien with the long mouth and lips. Lips it's, are. Yeah. Absolutely disturbing and disgusting and ugly, and I effing hate it. Mm -hmm. So get that out of the way. Um, even so, in the also in Jabba's palace, I don't know. I don't really like all. There's like hella. Uh, not sorry. There's a, a like different various type of aliens, and there's only like one of each. Like, how do all these different races just separate from their you know, from their race, and like, in how's there, there's like a hundred different species in Jabba's palace, and there's only one of each, like, I just, and I didn't like that as a kid either, it was just something that bothers me, and I just don't like the look of a lot of the aliens in, in Jabba's palace, like, I don't know, it's just weird to me, and I get you want to show, you know, this whole galaxy is so diverse, but it's like, you never see like two of the same aliens, rarely ever and besides the pigs and it, it, it bothered <laughs> me a little bit um the battle on endor like overall i like it you know it's it's iconic it's uh you know it's you know it's well, the one it's really the one thing people always talk about endor it, it's endor. important to the story because they have to break the the shield down um but it's just like i feel like parts of it were done very cheesily like like Han runs and taps the stormtrooper on the shoulder, and then he starts Fakes running. It. it just looks so cheesy. <laughs> that, it's, it's kind of a cool moment, though. He does the thing where they look the other way, and he runs around it. He's and like, "Hey!" Like, and then, "Oh, there's guys waiting with guns." <laughs> like, it's kind of cheesy, and I don't know. Yeah, like just the way the whole like the battle is cut it was just weird to me. Just I'm talking about on the ground stuff. Yeah, like, the yeah, space yeah. battles were awesome, and then the fight between Luke and Vader is incredible, but. Just talking about like the the you know on foot. So combat. out of the three, because at that time they were cutting back between the outside Endor. the Death Star, inside, and Endor. So Endor's yeah. your least favorite. Yeah, okay. definitely. Um, yeah, and I I love the stuff with Lando. Like they're they're about, to, and he's like, unless they knew we were coming, yes. and then he's like, no, turn around, turn yeah. around. Like it, that's awesome. But just the on foot battle with Endor and like 
the, you know, they're throwing rocks and I don't know. It was just, it didn't seem realistic. Like, I feel like the stormtroopers would have wiped them out. No problem. Yeah, there was, they didn't feel like if there was, was any, realistic, like it wasn't know? intense enough or it doesn't look, feel like there was any stakes involved. Yeah, like if that battle was made today, it's going to look awesome and we're going to get, yeah, there'd be murdered we're going to get a battle. There were murdered Ewoks everywhere. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and it was always back and forth like, oh, first Han and Leia and the rebels have the upper hand. Oh, now the Emperor Empire has the upper hand. Now Han and Leia have the upper hand. Like it kept going back and forth like six different times and it's just like, come on, get going. But um, yeah, other than I, I hate talking bad about Star Wars. Just, <laughs> well, let's go to Gio. So Gio, what do you got? <laughs> uh, let's talk about that battle on Endor real quick. Um, you have Ewoks throwing rocks at stormtroopers and stormtroopers going ah and just falling back you know like like they just got paralyzed or something it's just no and how hard I'm, can I'm you sorry fall rock? like come on i love star wars you know just as much as anyone but it's like when you when you look at that you're like okay like this is george lucas transition into what we're gonna get in the prequels now <laughs> well he didn't direct it though well no but he wrote the story like, yes yeah, yes yeah. so the lord's chasm though and i'm sure he was on set the oh, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. But the director I, does have an upper hand sometimes. Of course. Yeah. I thought they spent too much time with the Ewoks, um, honestly. Like, I don't know. Like, when they're sitting around and they're telling the story about, you know, the about C-3PO is. The, I actually love thing. that. Moment. Yeah, it's, I think that's a good part. I, I don't know. It's like, okay. Like, but go back to the... To it slowed the, the pace down to for To the you. thing at hand, yeah. you know. This is about, you know, uh, defeating the Empire once and for all. I don't want to get to know these Ewoks and whatnot. I actually think, and this might be a little bit, eh, but I think I like the Gungans more than I do the Ewoks. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Wow. But, yeah. Now, I didn't say I love Jar Jar more than No, the yeah, no. Yeah, I, yeah, I like the nice. Gungans more. And I don't know. It's just they're cute and whatnot, but it's just it, 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 it takes away from you know, the serious thing at hand, you know? Um, so they decided to use an unfinished Death Star. And I thought that was a bit of a negative. It felt like they were kind of running out of ideas. You know, they're like, okay, uh, so the Emperor is going to go to the unfinished Death Star. The Emperor is going to give the plans to them, uh, to no, the location to the rebels. And is gonna have the 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 security thing at a nearby moon base. It's just it felt like for a, a film that had such high stakes, they kind of you know went with the easy way out, sort of. Like, did you guys get that? Like they put all their eggs in one basket, kind of. Sort thing. of, you know. It's like you have an well, unfinished Death Star. All and, it all had a purpose, though. It was all to turn Luke to the dark side because he needed. Luke's friends there and the rebels there to get under his skin. So like it all made sense for what the Emperor was trying to accomplish to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll buy that. But um, I get what you're saying. Like, come on, another Death Star. It was just. Like, so, it, it was like everything was just like a coincidence. Like it all just kind of. Once that shield went down, like it's it never like, surprised you. It's like, oh, okay, this is the obvious step they're taking. Like the the one thing that will ruin the Emperor's plan is if the shield happens to go down, which yeah. it did, and then. The rest is history. Yeah, we, we, I, I think I get you. I get yeah. You. And, yeah, Jacob, those, the dancing aliens, terrible. Like, it, it's, it, this film is the worst, like, it, it's, it's the most victimized out of all the things that George Lucas has done. It's this film right here that's ruined the most. And, um, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, that's that's pretty much all I have for right now. Yeah, um, I'll echo the, all the edits that were done in the special editions, all the dancing stuff, all that kind. Of, I mean, it sucks that it happened. I mean, it kind of takes you out of it, and it's just it's a joke. Um, it's almost like it's a parody of Star Wars. That that's episode. what it. That's what it feels like. Um, and I'll also echo what you guys are saying about the Battle of Endor. There are moments where it's like, oh, okay, you know. But I get it. It's having fun. You know, I I get why it does it sometimes. The Ewoks. Are and a little you bit always like always have to consider it was made in the eighties. You yes, always have to consider yeah. that. So um, I will say that the Ewoks, you know, throwing rocks and whatnot's like okay, stormtroopers are supposed to be better than this. Um, but I will say about the Ewoks that one moment where the one is killed, that's like his wife or oh yeah, you know, there's that one like heart sad. moment, that heartfelt moment. Yeah, I don't um, mind the Ewoks. There are moments where it gets a little cheesy. No, here I, there, I do know. admit that, and it's like, how are these? little Ewoks fighting, but they're, they established them as ruthless 
pe- like ruthless beings. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's like they're gonna they're getting ready to kill Han, Le- Han and Luke, and you know eat them. So it's like, and that moment when you're talking about how they're like sitting around in a circle and they're telling the story, I thought that was important because it showed why the Ewoks are gonna help them because it it kind of like you know how they kind of got brought into the tribe or whatever, and it's like I feel like that moment was needed because the Rebel Alliance. They needed some type of help, and the Ewoks, whether we liked the way it was executed or not, the Ewoks helped them win that battle. And they had to give us a reason why are the Ewoks going to fight for the Rebel Alliance? Like, what motivation do they have? And I feel like they, that moment was shown to establish that relationship. Yeah, if if the if the battle between the Ewoks and the Stormtroopers were more convincing, I, I would. I yeah, would no. Buy, see, I, I would. Buy I agree. No, the battle. The way the battle's executed is horrible. Trade Ewoks for Wookiees, then we have a deal, okay? <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been pretty cool. I mean, at the time, those kids were probably thinking, "These are these baby Wookiees." Yeah, baby we don't Chewbacca's? know. Oh, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, for my negatives, those are pretty much it. Those are the two biggest ones that stand out to me: the the edits for the special editions, special editions, and the Battle of Endor. The cheesy moments within it. Um, any more you guys thought of over the last couple of minutes? Han Solo was a lot more funnier in this movie. Like I said, his little banter with uh, Lando while he's blind and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But then uh, back at the Ewoks thing, where he's constantly tapping on C-3PO's uh, shoulder. Oh, yeah. like, tell, yeah. me like, tell him we need this. Tell him we need this. Hey, we don't have that much time. Like, yeah. hurry up. <laughs> hurry up. And he's yeah. the one holding him. Like, yeah. <laughs> wasting time. So uh, yeah. it may not hold a special place in our heart as Empire Strikes Back does, but it's still Star Wars. It's the last movie we saw of these characters. So, Jacob, I'm going to start with you. What does what does Return of the Jedi mean to you now, uh, and has it impacted you in, in any kind of positive light as to what we do now? Well, when I watch this movie, I pretend that dancing scene in the beginning doesn't exist. So when I take that out, it's a great film. And... I can't talk about it enough. The the stuff between Luke and Vader and the Emperor, it's like there's so much depth to it and it's like yeah, it's a blockbuster movie, but it it proved that you can you can have a big spectacle blockbuster and have heart depth, you know, character development in detail to the story. The story was the most important part of this move this whole, all these movies, you know, at least the original trilogy. Yes, yes. So um and it, everything leads up to the that last those last 30 minutes of the movie and it it really the way it ties up the trilogy it, i really actually liked it and i love the celebration oh, it was, i think it was a great end of the trilogy yeah, I, yeah. I think it perfect and it doesn't mean you can't continue the story they're doing that but you know it it needed time to breathe you know it gave us enough time for there's so much history in between six and seven now so like and we have no idea where we're picking up at, which is very exciting. And um, even though it's stupid that he added Hayden Christian at the end, like when I take a second and look back at it, it makes sense because why would, you know... That's when he was good. Like Vader, you know, you know, betrayed the dark side and chose his son over the dark side. And showing Vader right there, you know, showed that he died and he went on to a better place and his life ended with him being on on the the good side so um yeah just as far as you know storytelling from a storytelling standpoint it i i love this movie and um it's you know it's gonna it's gonna be one of my favorites forever so yeah i'll echo that It, it wraps it wraps up the story in a perfect knot um i think it it ends the trilogy in a great way and that's why it's it's so important uh, whatever you want to think about it, it it's needed and uh, it's it only it not only like ends the empire, you know, it wraps up the the story for all the characters, but um, as we see now, it it leads into what we're knowing as a Star Wars universe. So um, it's very exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all ties in, even though it's 30 years away from each other. Um, so that's that's all great, exciting stuff. Uh, Gio, what about you, man? I um, so what does it mean to you now? And you know, does it have any kind of impact on you? Yeah, this this film has just enough uh, emotional moments and adventure uh, to stand with the original trilogy. Um, I really enjoyed seeing the the, the end, the conclusion of uh, Darth Vader and him redeeming himself, um, his relationship with Luke, um, Han and Leia uh, having assumably no more problems or worries now that you know Han knows that 
you know, we're brothers now. Um, and yeah, like I said, th- there's just uh, enough adventure in here uh, to, you know, have a good time and to really uh, see all your favorite characters and, you know, the, the epic battles and, and whatnot. So it, it really does stand uh, the test of time. Yeah. Any last thoughts? Um, Where do these characters, <laughs> do we get any hints? Do you guys see any hints rewatching this film, like where these characters might end up in The Force Awakens? Where we, I think, where we might the, meet I think them? for me, I think I've said this from the beginning, ever since Force Awakens was announced. I think that scene between Vader, Luke, and the Emperor is a hint at what Luke's going to be. I think he's someone who's so powerful, powerful he's going to be teetering between light and dark. So, he ultimately he's still good. Though. He's a Jedi, but he is so but he powerful. can use the dark yes. side, and that is called, they're they're called gray Jedi. Really? Yep. I think he's gonna be someone who teeters. That's why he's in hiding. That's my personal thought. I think J.J. Abrams is gonna take that scene, and I think because remember that's the question that he was asked for when he was a director when he was asked to be director, who is Luke Skywalker? I think that scene right there is it. And remember, only a few people even were even. I mean, only three people were in that room. Yep. You know, very few people know about what happened. In so that I, room. I think that we're going to see a very different Luke Skywalker from what we've seen. But I think it comes from that scene between Vader, Emperor, and himself. I, I'm not. Sh- I mean, we're assuming that Luke's been in hiding, or he he separated For, himself. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, but I'm very interested in the seat to see where Leia's at. Because as, I mean, we we're assuming that you know she's stuck with the, she's what are the, what the are they resist- called now the, the resistance. resistance now so she's a general for the resistance as far as I mean as far as we can assume and I, I want I know JJ Abrams has came out and talked about it but I'm really curious to see because she finds out that she has the Force in Return of the Jedi so how does someone take that information in and then not go explore it and not become a Jedi themselves like and. As far as we know, she didn't go and do that, and I don't want her to go like become a Jedi. But I'm curious to see why she never did. That's what I'm yeah, looking forward to. She's probably going to be the Mon Mothma. Yeah, at this point, and I'm cool with that. And yeah. I I remember J.J. Abrams' comments. He said, "But she's still strong with the Force, and we're going to see that." That's what he said. So I'm she, thinking it's going to be more senses. Yeah, exactly. Senses, Where she yeah. can sense Luke. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, yeah, she'll be able to communicate with Luke. Just. You know, telepathically. She probably knows more about Luke than anybody in, uh, like, where he is, maybe, and she's just not telling anybody. Yeah, because those two, they're they have like a yeah. twin telepathy. I'm just basically. very interested where her character's at at this time. Yeah, no, she's definitely one of these, and we found out over the past few weeks that she's a more prominent role than we originally thought. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, down with that. Yeah, which especially is, it's because exciting. You, these actors are all getting older; they're not going to be able to be in these movies for much longer. Yes. So you might as well get the most out of them right now. Exactly. You know. What about you, Gio? Anything that from Return of the Jedi that you well, know you're hoping to? I think when Luke uh, burns his father, his father's remains, mm-hmm. and the look on his Ooh. face really says a lot about where we're gonna find him. I think it it hurt him way more than what we initially thought, and I think that in turn is gonna kind of be the pushing point that sends him into exile because everyone else is gonna look at Darth Vader. As this, uh, you know, evil guy, the guy who brought, you know, torture and pain to everyone. But only Luke is going to really know, you know, who that guy really is, you know. Um, so do you think that he went into exile right away? Or no. do you think he stayed, you know, I think after possibly created the Knights of Ren or whatever new Jedi Order. And then maybe after 20 years, he's been in hiding for like 10 years or so. I think it was his responsibility to establish a new Jedi Order because Yoda tells him after... I leave. You will be the last of the mm-hmm. Jedi, so it's on you to. Uh, exciting, man! If we get, if we find out that there's a new Jedi Order, or that there was one at some point, mm-hmm. that's some exciting stuff. And Luke failed. Well, well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll we will see. see. So that's gonna wrap up today. Um, our final installment of the Padawan Podcast before the Force Awakens. Woo! Um, yeah, yeah, some very exciting stuff, and you know, talking about two movies that, you know, that they lead into the Force Awakens, and um, if you haven't checked them out. These are the movies that you should be watching before seeing The Force Awakens next week or whenever your tickets are there. Um, any final thoughts on anything, guys, before we get out of here? I'm excited. Yeah. Less than a week. All right, well, uh, I want to thank my fellow Rebel Scum for joining me today. Uh, Gio, where can they find you online, man? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at GeoRamos24 and on Movie Talk 
on Apocalyx Movies every day. <laughs> oh my god. Apocalypsemovies.com, yes. Uh, what about you, Grandma? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Governor Bartley, you know, a hint towards Grandma Bartley. Won't fit in my Twitter handle, which I'm still <laughs> very upset about. Just extend it one more letter and it fits. But yeah, Governor Bartley. Um, you can find me on this YouTube channel, pretty much on all of our podcasts, and please subscribe if you haven't. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you can find me at Twitter, Instagram at Qui-Gon Jake, our Facebook page, Apocalypse Movies, and make sure to check out our review of The Force Awakens next week. We'll probably get it one up as soon as possible. Yeah, um, we'll have an instant reaction thing, yes, and then we'll have our in-depth spoilers review. We'll yeah, we're going to try, we're gonna try and get on our phones and record ourselves the minute we walk out of the theater. Yeah. Something new we're going to try and do, and we're very excited for that. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Until next time, may the Force be with you.